2 of cos x is equal to sine of x plus 30. x plus 30 degrees. Now here's one that requires quite a bit of foresight um, because I've got a coefficient here. If I didn't have the coefficient, I could easily just turn this into something that had the code ratio there. But I've got 2 cos x, right? If I just had cos x e without this, I can simply turn this into cos of 90 minus x plus 30. That's one option. Okay, and then I could just treat it as a type 2 question in which I drop the causes and I already have my reference angle and then I go into solving. But that's not something we're going to do here because I've got the 2 in front. Um, so I'm going to have to let, work with that a little bit, right? And so one of the solutions that I could do is I could expand this over here. And let's show you how we're going to do that. I could use the compound identity for uh, sine, which is sine cos, cos sine, okay, and this remains 2 cos of x, okay, and then this is going to be special angles here, that goes x, this goes 30 degrees, this goes x, and this goes 30 degrees, right, and that's a plus, so this remains a plus. Now before I continue guys, I, I get this lately from students quite often, they say, how do I know I'm supposed to do that? The reality is, I'll take you back to these two keywords. It's foresight and practice. And they are interdependent because as you build up practice and you go through more and more and more examples and you do them on your own and you get feedback, you'll build up what we call foresight. And so I consider foresight to be looking at the question, seeing the solutions or possible steps towards it two or three steps ahead without even writing the things down. And that's really what you want to get to. That's really what you want to work on. That's really what you want to get to over here. Foresight, right? And it's only going to come through practice. So I don't expect you to know exactly how to get there. We don't expect you to, to know the solution right away. Um, but you do need to go through more and more examples to see all the possible routes, right? And the only way you're going to get this section is through loads and loads of practice in order to build up foresight. Okay, there are rules. People will say, if you see this, that, 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 um, you can memorize them, but I personally feel that there are too many, and that's why I think you should build up the practice related to it. Okay, now, let's work this out. Sine of x is just simply sine x, okay? Cos of 30, what is that? Cos of 30 degrees is root 3 over 2, right? Which is the same as sine of 60. Cos of x is just cos of x. Mm. and sine 30 is equal to a half, right? Okay, so here I've got 2 cos x. That's very clear. That remains there. Now, guys, all we need to do is we've got 2 cos x, and I've got another cos x over here. So I'm going to put them all on one side. So I've got 2 cos x over here minus a half cos x, right? Because cos x times a half is the same as a half cos x. And that's equal to root 3 over 2 sine x. Okay, I've just switched this around in terms of the order. 2 times 3 is exactly the same as 3 times 2. So 2 cos x minus a half cos x, it's like saying 2 cows minus a half a cow. That's going to give you 1 and a half cows remaining. And as you know, 1 and a half cows is 3 over 2 cos x, right? And that's what we have over there is equal to root 3 over 2 sine x. Now, guys, let's divide both sides by... Um, cos x. If I divide this side by cos x and that side by cos x, I end up with the root 3 over 2 tan x. Okay, and I've got over here on this side um, just simply 3 over 2. Now I can multiply both sides by 2, right, because I've got them in the denominators on both sides. And when I do that, I clearly see that these things cancel out, right? Okay, and this leaves me with an equation that now reads uh, tan x is equal to 3 divided by root 3. Okay, if I just want tan x. Now we solve for this. Because we saw that this whole thing was equivalent to this thing over here. So we solve for tan x. So I'll do that in the next slide. Okay, so now we found that tan x is equal to 3 divided by root 3, right? And this is exactly the same thing as saying root 3, okay? 
How did I do that? I said 3 divided by root 3. If I multiply that by root 3 over root 3, this just simply gives me 3 root 3, and this thing at the bottom is just 3, so that cancels out. So, okay. So, I hope that convinces you that that and that is equivalent, and that therefore you just get root 3. And why have I multiplied it with that? This thing is the same as multiplying by 1. Okay, in the meantime, let's get on with the question. This is positive, so we're working in the first quadrant and the third quadrant. I'm going to show you just the solution for the first quadrant for now, or at least finding the reference angle. So that was quadrants. In terms of R, the reference angle here is simply going to be x is equal to tan second function of root 3. And that's a special angle, so that's going to be 60 degrees. Okay, now for the first quadrant, we say that this was the given angle, just x x is equal to 60 degrees plus n times 180 because we're working with the tan graph and therefore n is an element of z. Okay, in the third quadrant we say x is equal to 180 plus 60 degrees plus n times 180 and this gives us 240 degrees plus n 180 such that n is an element of the integers. And there's your general solution solved for first and third quadrant using a compound angle identity as well.